Hello, this is the ABIT department, Westminster Computer Lab. Today we'd like to show you how to import pictures uh, from a camera, uh, from a digital camera device, uh, onto a storage unit uh, for the computer lab. Uh, why would you want to do this? Well, um, there are many things now that this computer lab has to offer. Uh, slideshows, desktop presentations, um, posters, and obviously pictures uh, make up a large element of this type of multimedia. Um, it's important to realize that a camera would be a great way in which to take uh, pictures uh, to incorporate into your works of art. Um, especially when it's your own work of art and you're not uh, you know, copying and pasting from the internet, which is a bad thing because you could be copying and pasting without the artist's uh, permission and uh, hence you could be getting into a lot of trouble. On the other hand, it's an important warning to know ahead of time that uh, you need to use some common sense here. Uh, generally, if you take pictures without people's permissions, it can have a habit of coming back to haunt one. And in particular, you shouldn't be taking pictures of uh, youth at the church uh, without uh, having uh, filled out some sort of permission form uh, that has the parents consent uh, in order to do that. Uh, so certainly taking pictures of objects uh, would be fine, but when you take pictures of people you should actually think twice before proceeding. How do you uh, actually uh, import pictures from a camera? Um, the procedures may differ um, from camera to camera, uh, but generally um, the general procedure remains the same. Uh, Normally with your digital cameras, it, uh, they come with a, a connection, that, uh, uh, some sort of cable that connects into the USB port of the computer. Uh, normally you would set that um, digital camera into display mode um, and then with the cable plugged in and plugged um, into the camera and plugged into the uh, USB port of the computer, uh, then you would power the camera on. Uh, I have a, uh, an old Sony CyberPix camera that I'm using. Um, generally the uh, procedure should be very very similar. Sometimes the storage locations where things are placed in are a little different. So I'm just going to, uh, I have already attached the cable and now I'm just going to power on the camera. And when I do you may notice that a dialog box has popped up uh, indicating what do we want to do um, with these pictures that are in the camera. Uh, sometimes for many uh, applications there is a, um, a program that uh, um, you can install uh, that looks after the uh, pictures. Um, for the Linux system there is something called the OpenShotWell Photo Manager. Uh, it's not recommended here for the computer lab because we don't want to just store uh, pictures onto the computer lab or we would eventually run out of space. Um, but this would be something useful if you had Linux at home and you wanted to be able to properly um, catalog and uh, manipulate your, uh, your pictures. You can do it through this folder manager application. We don't want to do that. We want to actually open up a folder and that way we can take a look at what uh, uh, pictures that we have captured. Maybe we want to be selective and also we have the um, option of not automatically deleting the images uh, from the camera and normally there's something on a camera where you can do that on the camera itself uh, just to give a little bit of a, a safety uh, feature mechanism here. So when you click on OK uh, it'll, it will bring up the Nautilus file manager and here it's showing several different uh, areas and uh, normally the pictures are contained uh, for my Sony CyberPix under this folder, so I point and double click onto this, and I point and double click onto this, and lo and behold, here are a lot of the images that I've taken. Obviously, uh, pictures that I've taken while making uh, these uh, YouTube uh, videos. And if I'm interested in using these images, that would be just fine. Uh, for example, I could now um, um, open up applications um, and li like. Um, um, Open Office and Press uh, slideshows. I could uh, open up a uh, word processing through Open Office, and I could incorporate these pictures in. Um, so uh, you don't necessarily have to copy these onto a permanent storage device. You could bring this up, uh, and now you have the access of where actually this uh, um, these items are, and uh, you can incorporate them into your um, work. 
I'm going to show you what to do to, um, to make a backup and again the best thing to do would be simply to have a um, removable media that you can take home. Um, in this case I have a USB device and I'm just plugging it into the machine and you'll notice that another uh, instance of the Nautilus file manager has opened up and now I can actually copy and paste over the images. Uh, you can just simply um, click uh, to select an image. Uh, just like in Microsoft Windows uh, operating system, you can uh, hold down the shift key and click to select all of the images. Uh, you can use the control key and uh, click um, to deselect or select images as well. I'm not going to copy over all of these images. I'm just going to copy over a few. So I'm going to use the control click method. I'm going to select this. I don't like that. I'm going to deselect it. I'm going to select this. I'm going to select this by control clicking. And I'm going to select this. And now, to bring these items over and copy over to my USB stick, I can simply click and drag. And then release. And now you should notice that those images have indeed been copied over. Now I can eject the USB key, we ignore errors, it's not a problem, and remove our USB stick. So now we have a copy of this and we know where to go to get to the saved images. And likewise, we should un unmount this, uh, this particular um, file system. Um, just as a matter of interest, and I'm just going back to the original area, um, I believe videos for this Sony CyberPix is under a different location. Um, if there were indeed videos, it might be in a, a different location, so just keep that in mind. There are no videos currently stored on here, but you may have to go down a different data path uh, to pick them up. But obviously when you're finished, you should unmount the, uh, the device, uh, eject it, so to speak. And so we're done there and then simply disconnect the camera and power off the camera and put away the cable uh, for the next time. Again, if you um, seem to collect more and more um, um, more and more uh, images on your camera, then you can go to the camera itself and remove those images. Uh, just as a matter of interest in making reference here uh, to the online learning resource, the guide on the side under online computer training, uh, we do have tutorials that talk about this, uh, the tutorials under graphic, importing pictures from a digital camera. Obviously the tutorial on file and folder management, which is good just to sort of emphasize the fact that we shouldn't really keep extra um, files onto the system, a place for everything and everything in its place. And also, under the audio-visual section, um, how to burn in CDs and DVDs using Gnome Baker. Uh, this would be handy if uh, you have such a tremendous amount of uh, pictures that you wanted to um, uh, import um, and uh, it just goes beyond the storage capacity of the disk. You can actually create a data CD uh, or a data DVD and, um, and sometimes you, know, you can get uh, rewritable um, D CDs and DVDs um, to be able to um, on the fly um, and in different sessions uh, store that data on. So uh, we do have a little tutorial and a YouTube video on how to use the Gnome Baker application for this. Uh, this is the AVIT department. Again, just wishing you happy volunteering and showing you yet another way how you can incorporate multimedia into your applications.